So welcome everyone. Uh, thank you for joining us for our information session about the Master of Legal Studies program at UCLA School of Law. So I'm Mary Kuzikowski. I'm the Assistant Director of Graduate Studies. And today is our full-time student panel with some of our current MLA students. It's, uh, I said it yesterday and I'll say it again, it's my favorite type of information session because you can hear directly from the students, you hear about their current experience, why they chose the MLS program and the connections that they have made already. So um, with the full-time option, uh, you can complete the degree nine months, so two semesters, one year. Um, recent graduates, international students on F1 visas, um, prof uh, professionals who can take a sabbatical, they make up our full-time cohort. And we also have student athletes who also choose to undertake the, the full-time option. Um, if you enjoy hearing about our students in the MLS program, um, then feel free to connect with us on LinkedIn, Instagram, Facebook. Uh, we do like to spotlight current students and all the good stuff that they're, that they're doing. And we also post uh, information about upcoming events like today on those channels as well. So uh, you can find us at UC UCLA Law MLS. And then just a friendly reminder for me, um, the priority application deadline is coming up on November 29. So without further ado, I will now turn it over to the executive director of the program, Jason Fisk, and our awesome student panel. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mary. So again, my name is Jason Fisk. I'm the executive director of the program. It's my pleasure to be here with you all. And thank you for taking some time out of your day to come learn about a little bit about the program. As, as Mary mentioned, this is, this is the full time panel. So this is exclusively talking about our nine month program where you do a fall semester and a spring semester, and then you graduate. It's, so that it's pretty, pretty efficient. You start in August, you'd graduate in May. And so if you, if you, we do have uh, three different types of people who usually uh, gravitate towards this, as Mary mentioned. It so happens we have our three panelists represent one of each of the three different types. And so we have a, uh, Linda Wan who's here, who's an F1 student who came in to do this program. Uh, we have John Deutsch, who is kind of, I guess, representing the, the, the sabbatical group. And so those who have a career, but then are able to have the flexibility to do this come for nine months. And then uh, Mia, who's here, who uh, is based is recently out of uh, undergraduate and, and starting this program. So it's, it's our, we're so happy to, have, thrilled to have the three of them here to share their experiences. If any of you have questions about anything related to the program, if you want to ask to the, to the panelists, feel free to type it in the question and answer part on here on Zoom. And at the end, I'll be sure to answer all those questions. We'll have the panelists answer all those, those questions. So thanks again. Feel free to chat that in at any point. So without, without further ado, I'm going to go around and have each one of our panelists introduce themselves and answer this, this first question while, while they're doing so. So the, the question is, why did you choose the a Master of Legal Studies program and why UCLA? So uh, the order will be John, then Mia, then uh, Linda. So starting with you, John. Uh, thanks, Jason. Good morning or good afternoon, everybody. Uh, my name is John Deutsch, uh, a full-time student in the MLS program. I came out to Los Angeles about 15 years ago to go to film school and was in the entertainment industry for a while doing all sorts of random production work uh, and then got involved in local neighborhood politics and community organizing. And that brought me to work with our neighbors currently experiencing homelessness where I worked for a few years uh, until I was made aware of the MLS program. Uh, and anything that deals with housing or housing insecurity or folks experiencing homelessness uh, comes up very quickly in contact with the law, whether it's legislation or litigation uh, everybody from the CEOs of nonprofits to the actual on the ground service delivery people uh, are having to be increasingly aware of the law. Uh, and I noticed that I was uh, having to read litigation that was directing our efforts, uh, look at legislation that was being proposed in front of the city council or in front of the state legislature. Um, and while I, I thought I had a, a pretty decent beat on it, uh, I was aware that there was really just a level that I wasn't able to grasp. Uh, and a lot of times in the nonprofit world, you don't have access to attorneys or to, to legal minds as much as you would like. Uh, for example, uh, I'm on my neighborhood council of which there's 99, the city has two attorneys for all 99 councils. Uh, so I, I found out about the UCLA MLS program. Uh, when I was younger, it was a choice between film school and law school and I, I chose film school. Um, but I was really attracted to a few things. Uh, first of all, it was at UCLA Law, where I had uh, a lot of friends have gone before uh, to get their JDs, and I've seen them thrive in their careers, and they spoke 
very highly about the experience and the faculty and the students. Um, and I really thought that it was just the right amount of law school for what I needed right now in my career. A very good overview of legal analysis, of all the stuff that 1Ls learn, plus some specialized courses in the things I'm interested in, uh, in, in public interest and uh, inequality. So when I found out about the program, I was uh, very excited. And uh, that excitement has borne out because it's been a great experience thus far. Hi, everyone. Um, so nice to, to meet you all. My name is Mia Colacion. Um, I am a full-time student just like John and Linda. I am currently specializing in the public interest specialization. And so for me, um, a little bit about my background prior to coming to this program, I actually was working full-time for two years as a labor relations representative. And um, prior to that, I had graduated in 2019 with my undergrad. So for me, I was really interested in UCLA and specifically the MLS because my job um, worked so hand in hand with the law. Oftentimes I was you know, negotiating with attorneys, I was trading proposals with attorneys. And so for me, while I knew that I didn't wanna necessarily become a lawyer, I needed to have that in-depth training and um, UCLA specifically stood out to me because they allowed us to specialize. So that public interest specialization was a huge, um, I'd say solidifier for me when I was looking at programs, primarily because I wanted to have that in-depth training, but in the field that I was interested in. So it's been a really amazing opportunity thus far. Um, I've been able to not only learn about public law, but also sprinkle in some employment law, which has been really helpful for my background. So um, it's been a it's been an amazing experience. Hi everyone, I'm Linda. So I am one of the international students here in this program. I graduated from Bar College and got my master's degree in international public policy um, at the University College London, and then had, had, a, had a one year exchange at Europe, Asia and Middle Eastern Studies. Um, basically before the law school, I actively uh, participated in the internships in my city's arbitration center and uh, uh, law firms. So I gained some you know, firsthand experience in the professional workplace. Um, I also work with uh, um, professors in the academics, uh, in the academia, and policymakers studying Ch China's marriage law, uh, marriage law back from um, um, since early 20, 1920s until the modern day. So, main, uh, so my career goal is to become an edu educator and advocate for uh, human rights and marriage law in Chinese academic setting. So, um, the, I'm really drawn to the UCLA's MLS programs because particularly because the specialization um, of the public interest, uh, public interest law. So um, it, it is very resourceful and it's um, super rigorous. And I believe, you know, by being here will, you know, uh, introduce me to the li likely minded uh, experience. Um, also, I do find it here just very uh, resourceful and the people who are admitted are so diverse and they all thrive in their own fields. And I feel like, okay, I really came to the right place, yeah. All right, thanks, Linda. And I, I will mention that the there's eight specializations in the program. Naturally, we don't have eight panelists. And so thus, the not every specialization is represented, of course, but entertainment, uh, HR, and employment law, like those, those are very popular specializations as well as some of our others as well. Uh, but so the next question is uh, just, it's very simple, very open-ended. Yeah, you, know, you all started this August, and now we're in late October, almost November. What, what has your experience been so far in the program? Are you, are you saying like, what did I get myself into? Get me out of here, or like, what's, what what are your what are your reflections so far uh, as far as your experience in almost November of your first semester? So again, start starting with John. Uh, I can't I can't believe it's almost November because the, the time has gone by uh, so fast. And yet right behind my camera here, I have all of my books and paper that has been slowly growing and growing. So um, I know I, I, I've had just a, a marvelous time. And that began the first week at orientation when I met my fellow classmates. Um, one of them turned to me a few days into it and said, it's been a long time since I've been around this many problem solvers. And I thought that was a really good way of describing uh, the cohort. Um, there were folks that were coming. I, I don't know if I've ever been in a group, such a diverse group with people uh, from different life experience, um, with different backgrounds. And yet we're all there to learn the same thing, which was really fascinating. It was really fun to, to you immediately got the sense that you were going to a program where everybody was there, not to get a, a degree, not just to put letters after their names, but to actually pick up on knowledge. 
uh, and we hit the ground running. Uh, you know, we, we had a little bit of work with Jason sort of the summer uh, before, and then we had a one week, one credit introduction to law, but then we just went. And um, I, I really, really enjoyed it. I take uh, three courses with the MLS students, public law, private law, legal writing and analysis. And then a course where I'm the only MLS student and all the other students are JDs. So I've also had the opportunity to be with one L's and two or two L's and three L's um, in a health law and policy class, which is which is really great. Um, I can't believe I've picked up so much in such a short amount of time, uh, not just sort of knowledge about how the law works, but also an ability to read cases, to, to read law, to synthesize things. Um, you know, when you start off, you're, you're given these cases to read and, and, you know, it takes a little bit of time. You get a few weeks into the program where we are now. And, uh, me and I were on a, the same breakout group last night and you just start flying through and you're like, I, I can't believe I sort of picked this up. So, um, you know, we're, it, it's, it's been a wonderful experience. Um, and not just because I feel like I'm actually learning and I've actually gotten a lot smarter in the last few weeks. Uh, but I've met people who have really challenged me, uh, who I think have brought out sort of the best in me. And, and especially after being in sort of the same environment, you know, in one workplace, it's so nice to meet other intelligent, curious people. Um, and it's, it's just been a blast thus far. Yeah. So, um, you know, everything John said, I would just reiterate, I think for me, this experience has been one that I can't imagine having never applied to this program. Um, it's something that I would never trade. Um, it's just been, I think everything that I had in, that I thought it was going to be and more, I really have enjoyed it. It's of course challenging, but it's a good challenge. You know, it, I don't think I ever would have learned this much. Um, I think the first week, just our orientation, I already had been coming home and was like, wow, I've learned so much. So now that we're in, you know, October, it, it's been, it's been a really great experience. Um, like John was saying, I've just never been around so many people that are all so self-motivated, you know, they're in-depth, really intelligent thinkers. So it's not just like the coursework is interesting, but also the, the conversations that we have in class are really interesting. And I think for me, being early earlier on in my career, it's been a really great experience to kind of see what other people have done in similar fields and to also not just learn, you know, academically from them, but also, hey, what are they doing? Um, that's really opened up my eyes. And so I'm just really appreciative of this opportunity. And, and I think if you're thinking about it, definitely do it because it's worth it. Thanks, Mia. Uh, Linda, and, and for Linda as well, uh, Linda coming in uh, came into Los Angeles for this program. We have many of our students actually relocate for our full for our full time program. Usually, the part time students already have a job here in Los Angeles. Usually, but a lot of our full time students do relocate. So, Linda, if you could talk about your experience, but also add in there, what was it like, kind of relocating and, and be able to come to Los Angeles, and how was the school supportive of you in, in that in that transition? Yeah, I would say the school is actually really really supportive, and also the faculty members. Uh, I am actually uh, so I have a lot of time at school, so actually I am very actively involved in the student government. Uh, so I am a mem member of the um, um, law, law school student government, basically the representative of our our class. Um, so basically, I feel like, um, you know, friends, the st students here, no matter it's master students or JD students, they are super friendly. And every single week, every Monday, we just talk together about, you know, different issues. We, about, we bring different issues to the panel and to the council and talk about that. And they are like, you know, they're like the law school and also the MLS program. It's very quick on fixing issues, you know, students' problems, their concerns. Um, and also the professor here, uh, I remember there was one time that I, I just got a, 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 a Pfizer shot and I got a fever. And so I asked professor, you know, um, should I, can I, I cannot make a class, what do I do? And they are super supportive. Uh, they not only actually, they not only, uh, let me just, you know, have some rest at home and, uh, you know, tell me to not worry about anything. Also, they even extend my um, paper deadlines uh, for almost one week. So I really appreciate that. So the professors are super friendly here and very, very supportive. I, and I also, I would also say, um, so LA is such a resourceful city, you know, although we are part of, we're full-time students here, you know, many of my friends uh, who are also full-time students, actually, they, they found a part-time job, part-time part-time uh, internship in the city. 
many of them go to law firms and many of them go to NGOs. Um, yeah, I just felt, found this is so resourceful. And UCLA is, you know, uh, has UCLA Law has a big name here in the West Coast, and we really appreciate that. Um, I would also say, actually, you know, in one of my JD class, in immigration law, in that class, we were actually introduced uh, many other uh, resources. For example, there was one um, a very famous uh, federal defender who came from uh, San Diego, and she came to our, to our class to, to our classroom and gave a lecture. Um, and then, you know, the professor just introduced us to to the to the federal defender and say, you know, students, you can feel free to apply for the summer internship. So I applied for the summer internship and I'm still in the process. But, you know, I think I might just get some good, pro um, hopefully get some positive feedback, um, you know, probably in two weeks. So there are actually many um, opportunities here. So also the, you know, although it's um, I'm MLS program, actually, you know, the whole school's resource is for us. It's not only MLS, but also the resources for JD students as well. So we actually enjoy and embrace all of them. So I, I really enjoy this program so far. Thanks, Linda. So the, uh, the, the next question is more specific of it. Some of you have kind of touched on this, but if we could talk specifically about what, what's the community like as far, as far as that? So you, we've talked a little about the academic and how that's why you did the program, but let's talk, let's talk the community and what's that like. Uh, John, starting with you. Um, well, maybe the easiest way to, to put it is, is I look forward to coming to campus every week um, because uh, I look forward to not only being in class and learning, but sitting next to these folks who have become uh, my friends, who have become my debate partners, who have become people I bounce ideas off of. And uh, you just, it's really difficult to explain. I, I, there's no other parallel I can really think of um, out there in life as to, as to what the, the community's like. Um, and I think, you know, there, there are two sides to it. One is the cohort and one is the school. Um, Everybody there is there for the same is is there for different reasons, but same reasons, right? We all have our, our different paths and different things we're learning, but we're all there to learn as much as we can. And a lot of that comes not just from the lectures, but the conversations you have with fellow students, uh, reviewing your notes, studying together. Uh, you know, I might understand this subject better, and I might not get that subject, and we get together and we figure it out. Last night me and I were digging deep into Supreme Court cases and Second Circuit cases and Ninth Circuit cases. Um, and it was just such a great back and forth. And I know I learned just so much and a lot faster than I would have by myself. Um, and then you really get the sense that the university is behind us uh, and is supporting us. Um, I have another master's and I have an undergrad and I can't say the same thing about every school I've been to. Uh, I think Linda kind of touched on it. You really get the sense that um, that Jason and the faculty and the School of Law and the university as a whole is, is dedicated to our success. And that success is measured by how much we learn and how we can take that into the world and, and how we can apply it. So it, it's, it's, you would think that maybe studying law, I always kind of thought maybe it was sort of rote and, you know, it was just sort of prescribed A, B, C, and D. Holistic isn't necessarily a word I would use. Um, but it's certainly the case. And, you know, I've, I've already made some fantastic new friends uh, who I wouldn't have otherwise met, um, you know, people who do contracts for JPL or who are in the music industry or who want to become sports agents. Um, it's also been a very exciting year for UCLA athletics. And so we found ourselves going to some of the games at the Rose Bowl and we're making plans to go to some of the basketball games. Um, so it's, it's really fascinating. And I think, yeah, the, the best way I could describe it is I really I can't wait for tonight when we'll all be on Zoom together for our class. And um, yeah, it, it is just a very, maybe the most supportive um, environment I've had at a, at a higher learning institution. Thanks, and uh, Mia. Yeah, so I think, you know, coming into this program, I, I had these ideas of what law school is. I think all of us have seen, you know, TV shows or heard these anecdotes of just like horror stories. And so I was a little bit apprehensive, um, but something that really stood out to me was just how supportive the community was. Specifically, I think the professors, um, they are so just they are literally leaders in their industries or in their perspective, you know, um, specializations of law and 
you know, have every right to be, I would think like very scary, but they're not, they're very humble. They're very, you know, um, engaging. They want to see you succeed. And that just makes the environment that much more, you know, easy to learn in. I think my cohort peers, like John was saying, I was introduced to people that otherwise I probably would have never crossed paths with. And so that's been really remarkable to me because, um, you know, we all come into this program with different reasons, um, but we all kind of come together when we're doing our assignments and, you know, we laugh, we struggle together. <laughs> so it's this sense of camaraderie. Um, I think that I've just been overwhelmed with the support and coming from a little bit of a smaller um, state school for my undergrad, the professors were very supportive. And so I wasn't sure how that was going to be, you know, at a larger school, but I can say that they're just as supportive. Um, and the resources here are even more, um, I would say, than maybe like a smaller state school. The resources really stood out to me just because I think immediately as soon as I was like admitted to the program, all of a sudden these people are, you know, connecting with you on LinkedIn and, and you know, speaking with you and, and, you know, really welcoming you into the community. And so for me, it was really just surprising because I had never really experienced that kind of, um, I guess, like that kind of environment. And so I was really, I felt from, from the moment that I, that I got admitted that, you know, okay, this is where I'm meant to be. Everyone wants to, you know, we all want to succeed. And so it was a very welcoming and supportive group. Yeah, I really agree with John and Mia. And I also would add, you know, um, I also found my classmates, they were not only just friendly, they were just like, you know, every time I had some difficulty with certain issue, they just love to share their notes with me. Um, it's just beyond my imagination that how friendly and supportive they are. Um, actually, you know, also the professors are also, I am just so, so, so touched, you know, almost I, 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 I basically spend like at least 30 minutes um, every, every single week talking to my professor. And not only, um, so including the time in every class uh, or just spending the office hour. Sometimes they just, sometimes, um, you know, 20 minutes, 15 minutes uh, meeting, they will extend it to 30, 40 minutes. Um, so they really care about us. And I was, um, and answered my question. So I feel really, really, you know, that this community is just amazing. Um, and actually I would also add, because, um, you know, my um, I, I, I live in the, off campus uh, school housing um, in, um, uh, so it's called Wayburn and we have lots of law students and my students here, you know, sometimes you just run into your classmates um, and maybe, you know, some JD students too, and you work with them, you talk about the legal problems with them together. And they are really also willing to, you know, you know, to communicate with you. Um, so I also found actually MLS really has the awesome, does an awesome job in, uh, at least, you know, putting me into a good um, rec uh, accommod accommodation. I mean, they really take care of the international students here. Yeah, so this is the thing that I really want to add also. Fantastic. Now, uh, this next question is, is I guess, similar, but kind of more specific in that talking about uh, networking opportunities specific. So na naturally, a lot of people are thinking, okay, UCLA, high level education or whatnot, but what, what's the networking like and how, how can that be advantageous? How, in your experience so far, how has the school specifically facilitated uh, you all with uh, networking opportunities, whether that be with other master legal studies students or and or with other students on the campus? Starting with John. Uh, sure, well, it really starts from, from day one. I think uh, shortly after I learned I was admitted, I was made aware of a LinkedIn group, I think maybe a Facebook group. Um, we were we were thrown together before we even had an opportunity to meet, um, and uh, you know even even over the summer uh, with our uh, weekly Zoom seminars, we started to to get to know each other, uh, and then as soon as we were on campus, it was clear that the program you know was designed not just to ship us from class to class to class, but to allow for opportunities to mingle for reflection, to take what we had just learned and kind of share our thoughts and feelings about it. Uh, I've gone to pretty much every uh, every uh, few weeks, maybe every other week, every three weeks, there's a networking dinner uh, before one of the big classes we take in the courtyard there. And I've taken opportunities of that and try to sit with different people and meet different people, not only from our year, but also the cohort above us. Um, my mailbox every day is filled with interesting opportunities to meet other students, whether it's through student groups 
or lectures, um, uh, various events on campus. We have a Slack group that uh, is very, very active and we use for everything from posting job opportunities to asking questions about the upcoming quiz to making plans to go to uh, football games. Um, and, and, and going back to what Linda said, it's just a, a really collaborative environment. I had to miss a class a few weeks ago and a, a classmate who I hadn't spoken to that much just emails me out of the blue and says, hey, I noticed you weren't in class. Here are my notes from that class. Um, everybody is, is incredibly friendly. Everybody, uh, whether they're a CEO or entry level, I think really kind of talks on the same level here. So it's very easy to communicate with somebody who's maybe a little bit advanced in their career without feeling intimidated. Um, and there's just so many events uh, that I, I want to take advantage of as many as possible. Uh, and, it, and there's also a really good balance of events that are in person on campus and digital because, you know, you, you can't, I can't get over to campus every day. So it's, it's been really fantastic. Um, there have already been, for example, a lot of job offers flying around on the, on the Slack and in other places that I've seen. So it, it's, um, it's really a great opportunity. And I'm looking forward also to sort of the end of the semester having a little bit more free time because I know there are folks I want to get together with and maybe talk a little bit more, or go out and get lunch and get coffee. Um, there's almost too many people to meet in too short an amount of time. But thus far, it's been really, really exciting. Yeah, so like John was saying, I think one of the biggest things that stood out to me was um, the networking dinners that we have. So they're probably every other week and it's a really great opportunity for us to not only meet each other because when we're in class, of course, we know each other's backgrounds, but you know, we're in class, we're working. And so we don't necessarily have time to have more just like general conversations. So that's been really great, but it also allows us to intermingle with the cohort before us as well. So with the 2020 admits, um, so that's been really useful. I think for me, something that I've really enjoyed is also the networking opportunities that I've seen through some of the student organizations that I've joined as well. Um, I know, for example, um, you know, there's specific student organizations that you can join based off of like, you know, identities that you may share. And so for me, like um, one of the ones that I joined was called Women of Color Collective, and they're having a um, a guest speaker come in and speak to us about, you know, being a woman of color in the legal profession. So to me, that's really cool, too, because it's allowing us to network not only with just, you know, our MLS cohort, but also with JD students and also with other or I mean, other um former JD students from UCLA who graduated and are now attorneys and practicing. So I feel like the networking opportunities don't just stop, you know, once you graduate, they continue and there's a really big pool of alumni that want to help you and that want to connect you. Yeah, I would say that I actually very much enjoyed our um, uh, networking dinner. Every single time I met different um, people and we talk about different issues, share our you know perspectives here, and I really enjoy that. I really appreciate it. MLS has always like you know be very considerate and hosting those events. Um, furthermore, I would add actually you know uh, in the long school every Thursday night they have a bar review so you know JD students um, MLS students LLM students come together and sometimes uh, actually they are even planning for uh, you know uh, an event for uh, early November for uh, law school plus medical students um, um, mixer so basically we have lots of you know, opportunities to do networks within law school. And I also know that actually the graduate school department, um, so the overall department is also hosting many networking events. Um, although sometimes I'm just too busy to attend them, but I know they are there. And also they are very, very uh, supportive, like in uh, making students mix together and get to know each other. And also with uh, different fields and they, you know, in this, um, they also, uh, so in the, uh, in the career service, they, they also help students to, um, you know, tailor their CVs, uh, their writing samples, help them to, to make the next move to their career. So yeah, it's, it's super helpful. Thank you, Lyndon. One one thing I do want to note with that too, the full time program, nine months. You know, that's 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 a pretty quick, efficient uh, amount of time to do a full time program in. But we do want, we do want to say that the networking opportunities will be there forever. Like as as far as whether that's next year, five years, ten years, twenty years from now after graduating, we will always be having very regularly events that are specific for networking. So you thus your you get to get connected with your current cohort, but then also all the future cohorts of what's to come. And there's, and I think everyone can attest to 
the, the caliber of individuals who are coming in so that I think that could be a pretty exciting benefit as well as far as the networking side. Um, and then, so as a closing question and all everyone who attending again, thanks for coming. This is a great time to start putting your questions in uh, for the panelists. This will be the last question, the last question that I'll have. And so the question is, uh, who would you recommend this, this program for just kind of generally, what are your thoughts as far as people, everyone here is, you know, thinking, is this the right program? Is this the right time? What, and so what, what, who would you recommend? What would you, what would, what should they be thinking about when making a decision if they want to start this program this August? So starting with John. Uh, yes, you should, um, is, is sort of the short answer. Um, uh, this program is, you know, I, I, I go back to what I said earlier um, in describing the folks in this program as, as problem solvers. These are people who, um, wherever they are in their career, are really interested in taking it to that next level. Um, and, 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 you know, not, so many, not, not just that next paycheck or that next promotion, but really digging into what they love already, but, but, but a deeper level. Um, I have seen folks in the program who are maybe 10 or 15 years older than me and 10 or 15 years younger than me. And the program is equally as beneficial for them at their stages in career as it is for me, who's sort of in the middle. Um, also, as somebody who's always kind of been around the law, I have a lot of lawyers in the family. I've always been interested in it. I always said that, you know, I, I'd love to go to law school if I could just for the learning, not for the actual lawyering. Um, and now I'm here learning stuff that I'm not only finding useful, but incredibly edifying, um, you know, just as, as a person, as an Angelino, as a citizen, my knowledge of how the world works is expanding. And I can take that both in my professional life and in my personal life. So, you know, if, if, if you've ever come into contact with the law, um, even, even if it's in reading the newspaper, uh, I think this program can offer something to you because you're, you're not only with some of the most outstanding faculty and, you know, good faculty teach well, that's not a correct sentence, but I think you know what I'm, what I'm trying to say. Um, and, and you're meeting folks uh, both in the MLS program and in the JD program who are already doing incredible things and are going to go on and do incredible things. So um, I, I think the fact that you're here, uh, probably means that this program has something to offer. I remember being in your shoes about a year ago, sneaking during work to a conference room that nobody knew where I was so I could attend this session. Um, turns out they didn't mind. Um, so I, I think, you know, if, if, you're, if you're interested in just growing uh, professionally or as a person, this program is probably for you. Thanks, John. Uh, Mia. Yeah, I think this is a great question because um, this program, there's so many different backgrounds. So it's not necessarily like a one size fits all um, candidate that comes into this program. So whether you are getting your first master's degree like myself or you're getting your second or third, I think that there's a space for you. Um, I think the key things that you should possess are probably an interest in law, maybe some background where you've interacted with it a little bit. And also, um, at least like for the full time, if you're going to be doing the full time program, I'd say um, making sure that you are a like self motivated and driven person because you know it is nine months, but it's a lot of work so it's not going to be something that you can just kind of like do here and there it's going to be something that you need to really make sure that you're focused on. Um, so I think that those qualities are probably like the best qualities to have for someone but. I definitely think that, you know, speaking from my experience, if you're someone who's maybe um, more of a recent grad and, you know, it has professional experience, but is trying to look to also, you know, I think establish more um, of that and, and grow in your professional um, in your professional career, I think that this program is for you as well. I know that when I first like was going to some of these, some of these um, like, Q&A sessions, I was a little bit like, oh, I don't know, everyone seems like so established and I'm not sure, but um, you definitely can do well in the program and there's definitely other people who come from similar backgrounds as you. So again, um, you know, whether you are near the end of your career and you're trying to learn how to just kind of run your own business and create your own business or you're starting your career, I think that, that you will find something useful in this program. Yeah, actually, I totally agree with John and Mia. Uh, I, and I would also add, actually, I specifically, um, you know, um, 
you know, kind of encourage recent graduates to apply for this program. Um, you know, by talking to the women CEOs here, the head of HR, a very known journalist, just like they, they just, you know, the conversation and they themselves really empower me. Just they, they, you know, by talking to them and working with them, they just opened a new door for me. And so I would really suggest, um, you know, re really think about this program um, as a, uh, as a just a fresh graduate. Um, especially if you are deciding between academia or professional world, if you're deciding between pursuing a PhD pro uh, track in the future, or um, just you know want to be a lawyer in the future or someplace else, just think about it. I think this is a good opportunity to, for you to explore, um, and I would definitely recommend this program to you know to all the new uh, for all the fresh graduates. All right, very good. And thank you so much for answering those questions. There's there's many questions from from the attendees, which I'll start to uh, that I'll start to review. The the first one, there's a couple of questions that are themed about uh, it, it, how to get admitted into the program and questions related to that. So I'll, I'll say a couple of words, then I'll, then I'll ask some questions to the panelists. So the uh, generally speaking, whether you're talk whether you're applying to the full time program or the part time program, uh, basically how we look at it is. Uh, the further out you are from your education, the more we balance your uh, professional accomplishments. So whether that be work or you know th those types of things, the closer you are to your graduating undergraduate, the more that your academic performance is balanced. Now, of course, academic performance is going to be important no matter what, but it just becomes of less significance the older you get. So, for example, we had. Uh, in our first cohort, we had someone accepted who was 72 years old. So how much did we balance her undergraduate uh, in that? Well, let's, there's a little bit ago. Now she actually did great in her undergraduate, but but she uh, that, that wasn't the primary uh, consideration, let's say for her. But if we have someone who is admitted in the first class who was 19 years old. And so education was basically everything because that was that was his life up to that point was finishing college and finishing it fast. And so that that was and so that's kind of as you can see that and if you're most people are somewhere in the middle of that. So that that's so we, as as Mia was kind of saying, uh, we 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 don't we don't only take people who are super experienced and that we have those a lot of those are in the part time program. A lot of people who are in the full time program are those who are closer to that undergraduate or those like John, for example, who's uh, just kind of takes sabbatical for things and, and looks to uh, knock this this program out. So, but a question posed is, uh, well, one was someone asked what's kind of the rate of acceptance. So this, it is a competitive program to get into. We, about 30 to 40% is how many, is, is uh, this last couple of years is, is how many we've accepted of the applications. However, as I think everyone here is, is saying, you don't know how good your application is gonna be unless you submit it. Because a lot of people kind of rule themselves out. And I think that's a shame because there's the, just one GPA from one spot is not the only thing we look at by any means. And so there's only one way you can know. It, it doesn't take that long to put an application together. It's worth a try, I, I, I think. Additionally, we have uh, we look at applications and then we send people to the interview round. So if there are people that have some question mark, but we interview everyone, everyone's interviewed, but this is a great opportunity. We let people through an interview, talk it through. So if you can get to the interview stage, you can really thrive, even if you have some certain question marks on whatever it is. So that's that. Uh, so one question person did ask, so all three of you obviously were accepted into the program, here you are. So the, what do you think, uh, why, let, I'll praise it this way. What did you, what do you think stood out about you to be accepted into the program? What were, what, 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 how did, what was, do you have any strategy as far as how you applied and, and what worked for you? So I won't ask this to everyone, just anyone, if anyone wants to answer this question, uh, you can jump in. I, I feel like I should ask you, you, because you, you interviewed, no. Um, I was just going to say that. <laughs> uh, well, well, one of the things I enjoyed about the interview process was that um, it really encouraged me to talk about my experience and where I was in my career uh, and, and some of the things that I have done rather than just where I went to school or go through the bullet points on the CV. Um, even though we had to do things remotely, um, everything from my uh, initial phone call with Elsa when I just had questions about the problem and was applying uh, to the program to the video interview I did, um, I, I felt that uh, a lot of it was, uh, I, I know this might sound a little trite, but just being myself uh, and being honest about where I was and, and what I was looking for. Um, and I, I felt like that came across. I, I had a, a pretty good undergraduate experience, but I don't even think we, we spoke too much about it. It was much more about 
uh, my life experience and, and what brought me to this place. So it, you know, it's one of these applications where I didn't feel like I had to pretend to be anything other than what I was or where I was. And I think that really made it comfortable and, and made the matriculation that much, you know, sweeter. Fantastic. And I do want, we want to clarify one thing uh, that was aptly pointed, pointed out to me. I said, we interview everyone. What I meant was we interview everyone who's a finalist for admission to, to be accepted. So, so that I just do, do want to uh, clarify at that point. Uh, but oh, did, did uh, Mia or Linda, do you want to jump in and answer any part of that? Or are you good? Yeah, I was just going to say something that, that popped into my mind and John kind of hit on it is I, I would say like the sincerity. So I think that, you know, when you're getting interviewed, or if you like make it to that point, um, you know, they're asking questions about like why you're doing this program or like why you want to do it. And so I think that, you know, one of the reasons why I was selected in, in my fellow, you know, cohort peers were selected is because we all really have this passion for what we're doing. And we have this like desire to learn, you know, we're not just here to add some letters to our name or check off another thing on our resume. We genuinely want to utilize this degree in our perspective fields that we're going to take it back into. So I think that's what stood out um, coming from, you know, someone who was a recent grad, if any of you are recent grads, um, I think also for me, because I did have a pretty competitive like resume as far as like, like, because Jason was saying my undergrad or your undergrad experiences emphasize a little bit more depending on, you know, what age you're applying at. So for me, I think making sure that you have good grades, making sure that you elaborate a lot on, you know, what you did in your undergrad experience um, and also what you're doing now, I think will help you also. Yeah, so the interview process, I remember it's super fun, interesting. And we read, oh, can, can I disclose anything? Just well, that's, that's fine, yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Okay, okay. So we read very interesting cases, but I remember that was actually the first case that I've ever read. So I was, very, very um, serious on that. So when I got the case, I even actually talked to a JD student at Stanford Law School and she helped me prepare that. And I found in the study with her learning this whole um, the interview process actually really helpful. Even the, I mean, like I, re I really, re I really uh, appreciate your interview question, Jason. It's it's just, um, I felt it's really profound and it just influences me until today, you know, even in the law school class. So I would say, you know, prepare well for the interview cases and that'll be very helpful, not only in the interview process, but also your later, later on classroom experience. Yeah. Great, thanks Linda. Uh, so the, ne the next question, um, I'll answer this one since this isn't relevant to these, to these three panelists but is relevant to other full-time students. So the question basically is, is this a good program to, uh, to do and then to do maybe a different graduate degree, whatever it is. So specifically posing the question was like a, a medical school or, or a program like that. So that, you know, lot, lots of programs. Uh, it, it absolutely is. And I think it, it uh, for some people, depending on what you wanna do is potentially a powerful pairing with another degree. Medical school is an interesting one. We actually have many different people who are interested in our program who, are, who want to go to medical school. Because as you know, if you want to be a doctor, the law is everywhere. It is all over the place regard, uh, every, every single day. And so thus, a lot of students are saying, I'm going to do this degree first, nine months, real quick, knock it out, know all this great stuff, now go to medical school. It, uh, there, there you go. Yeah, John, John's pointing out the health, the health law and policy class things. I mean, how, for a doctor, how fantastic, but also being a doctor is about whether you like it or not, it can be about running a business, it, it, these, these things like this, it's all law. And so thus it's, it pairs very naturally and easily with other ones. Now I will mention, I, I do wanna give you a tip here as far as one thing, as far as on the missions front. So uh, I would, if you, in your application process, I would not recommend saying you wanna do this degree before a JD degree. Uh, that and, and, and maybe that's in your a seed in your mind or somewhere. If it is, keep it in your mind. Don't put it in your application. Uh, that tip number one for you, uh, because we we like to uh, at the law school we like to look at the master legal studies as your end destination as far as knowledge of of the law. And so it's totally fine if you if you say I'm, I want to go to medical school after that. That's great. Other things, but not just don't put the JD degree because we. Uh, we don't want to be considered like just a feeder, it, it, a feeder program into a JD program because we feel like that minimizes it because it, it, we want it to be like, this is a great place to be. 
and it's the main destination for our students. So that's just a quick tip for you. And speaking about other tips as well, anyone who goes and requests an application, you'll receive an email that is a link to the application for you to fill out, but it also includes a, an application tips video for you that, that kind of talks through a lot of specific tips about each document that you need to submit and some various things that you'll want to know. So I suggest uh, requesting application and you can, you can watch that uh, video as well that, that uh, Mary put together. The, the next question, this, I think this is a great question for particularly John and Mia, because this directly applies to both of you. The question is, how did you basically like, how did you go about balancing the, oh, maybe I'll do this part time. Uh, and so I don't have to like leave the workplace and do it versus I'm just going to knock it out at nine months and do it full time. So how did you both kind of go about balancing that equation since you both were in the workforce and then decided to come in and do this program? So, uh, John, we'll start with you. Um, sure. Um, well, one of the big things was was on what you were just talking about, uh, Jason, with the with the JD. Um, quite simply, I don't want to take three years off of my life. Uh, I don't I don't have that three years uh, to spend, um, especially where I am right now. Uh, so that was that was sort of the the, the first reason. Um, and really, you know, I think one of the exciting things about being a full time student is that I'm going to be able to take all this stuff that I've learned, that I've already learned, and, you know, I'm already putting it into action, but come next May, I'll be ready to go. Um, and, and that's really exciting to think that in just nine months, I will have gone from, uh, you know, a, an entering student to somebody with that amount of knowledge under my belt. So for me, it, it made a lot of sense. Um, and being in the program now, I think it, it actually is a, a real blessing. Um, one of the things that the full-time students get to appreciate, the part-time students don't, is how some of the various classes mesh together. Uh, uh, you know, me and I are, um, uh, Linda, are you in the 114? No, you're not in our 114. You are. I'm you're in all. the 114 class. In the 114. Yeah. We all wear masks in class and I can't tell who anybody is. That's, but, um, you know, in, in that, that's the legal writing and analysis class. And we're able to, sometimes cases come up in both classes, but you're able to take the skills from one class and transfer them to another, which I'm not sure would be possible if you took them, say, two or three semesters apart. Um, so I think just as a holistic learning experience, um, it's, been, it's been better. Um, and for me, you know, I kind of wanted to treat it almost like the job I have at the moment. And, you know, that it, just diving into it and doing it, kind of taking it head on, um, I think was an approach that worked for me. Yeah, so my experience is a little bit different because I did um, leave my job to do this program full time. So kind of, you know, I, I see the question I believe is the one about, you know, balancing it with, with student loans, and living expenses. So for me, um, that was something that was a really big factor on my mind because starting off, you know, I'm watching my money. <laughs> and so um, what I did is I actually worked for two years. I saved up my money and then I applied to um, a couple scholarships and I was able to get those as well, which really helped offset some of that cost. I do commute. So I, I chose to stay at home and I, and I go to school, you know, twice a week. And then the other um, classes are online, which has been really helpful as far as like cost savings. So it's definitely doable. I just think planning ahead. But the really great thing is that the scholarships are there and they are available. And it's not just like, oh, apply for these scholarships and maybe you'll get them. Like they are something that, you know, I would say are, are you're able to get them, you know, as long as you meet the qualifications. So um, I would say definitely apply to all of them that you think you qualify for. I know there was one of them for me that I was like, I'm not sure, but let me just see what happens. And it ended up being the one that is helping me the most actually. So um, just do it. If you're thinking about it, just do it. I also know that, um, you know, the MLS department, they're very helpful. So if you have questions about whether or not you meet that criteria, they will answer those for you. And then as far as kind of um, like how I manage this, like overall, as far as like, like my day to day. So I just kind of treat my schoolwork now as my full time job. Um, so, you know, waking up early starting to read my cases and then you know doing any homework that I need so um it's definitely just kind of taken over like where I I what I used to be doing during the day yeah thanks Mia and I would also add you know sometimes just reading taking time to read cases is 
it just takes you so much time. And I, would re I was actually really struggled with that. But later on, I talked to the professor and they were like, you know, just, you, you don't have to do everything when you, you know, you don't have to be ready, so ready. Like, yeah, you don't have to absorb everything when you do the reading, do the cases. Otherwise, there is no use for coming to class. So my strategy on this is actually, you know, I got the, basically what the reading says, and then I go to class, talk to professor, and see what's the points here, uh, what, the, what they actually uh, want students to absorb it from. So basically, it's not reading, reading, reading. More, more importantly, you have to be very strategic. And the professors here help you with strategic reading, um, strategic and close reading. Yeah. And uh, as uh, as for the scholarships, I would say, uh, you know, the MLS programs, um, I think they give very good scholarships. And uh, I really encourage everyone to apply for our program and see if you can get it, uh, hopefully get it. Fantastic. Well, uh, thank you so much. So that uh, w one question that, that wasn't asked that I want to make sure to, to answer as well. So sometimes people ask, uh, do people usually, uh, you know, keep their job and, and, and still work while doing the full time program? And the answer to that is bad idea, like f focus in on, on the, the program uh, when you're doing that. Now, is it possible for some people or like, oh, I'll, I can dial it back to 10 hours a week or something? Well, you know, I, I'm sure you can make that that type of thing work. But as I think all the three panelists uh, all said, it, it's great. It is great. If you're doing the full time, it's great to commit to it full time because that, that's how you're going to get the most out of it. Or else, you know, it, you, you'll siphon off some of the experience that you probably wouldn't want to siphon off if you're really just going to focus just nine months that, to, to knock it out during that time. So that's that. That's all the time we, we have today. If you if you have other questions or if we didn't answer the questions, feel free to reach out to us. We're more than happy to connect with you and answer any questions. And again, as Mary mentioned at the beginning, uh, November 29th is the priority application deadline. And also uh, connect with us on LinkedIn or Facebook or Instagram so that you can stay updated with all the most uh, up-to-date information, including lots of student profiles that we regularly do. So again, thank you all to the panelists for taking the time today. Really appreciate and hope you have a great afternoon.